of the cool things that I get to do for a living is study kids in their everyday lives. So let me tell you about one girl I studied several years ago. The name I give her is Zoe. Zoe was your typical 12-year-old girl, African-American in the sixth grade at school. She loved to hang out at the beach and talk with friends. She had a part-time job and kept careful track of all the money that she earned. Like many tweens, she spent a lot of time working on her look. It's part of what many kids do as they get older, figure out who they are and how they want to look so that people perceive them in the way that they want. Zoe took this to an art form, figuring out where to get the best clothes, trading with others to save money, even making some of her own fashion designs. So one day, I observed Zoe looking for a particular clothing item that puzzled me. She went to everyone at the trading store and asked, do you have African-American t-shirts? Do you have African-American t-shirts? I'm looking for African-American t-shirts. And I wonder to myself, what does she mean? I mean, what on earth is an African-American t-shirt? Is this some new fashionable piece of clothing I haven't heard about before? And then I figured out what she meant. You see, Zoe was hanging out in a virtual world called Yville, and she was working on the outfits for her avatar. So let me backtrack a bit and explain a little bit about Yville, because most of you are probably wondering, what's a virtual world, and what's a virtual world for kids? Well, Wyville was one of the first virtual worlds, one of the first virtual worlds ever, in fact, created in 1999. It was developed by Jim Bowers and Jen Sun, two neuroscientists out of Caltech, who thought that kids should have a virtual space to explore science in fun and authentic ways. Thus, the why in Wyville. So they created Wyville as a place to explore science in your free time. Thousands of kids go on Wyville every day, millions of every year, and they've done that for the last 15 years. On Wyville, kids can play science games, earn clams or virtual money from playing those games, work on their online characters, what we usually call avatars, and talk with other kids through the little chat bubbles that you see above their heads. They can create face parts, um, sell those parts to other kids, manage their own fashion design businesses, deposit virtual money in virtual certificates of deposit, even save up for big ticket items like virtual cars. These are mine. <laughs> in Wyville, kids can fight epidemics, design rockets, research environmental concerns like red tide and power usage, build homes, write newspaper articles. There are tons of things to do in Wyville. But one thing that nearly all Wyvillians share in common is the desire to hang out with other kids and to customize their avatars. It is a ridiculous amount of fun to make an avatar on Wyville. I have made many. Now, when most people hear about kids or tweens online, the first things that come to mind are cyberbullying, predators, danger, protection, less screen time. But today, I want to tell a different story. My story is based on hundreds of hours of observation and millions of data points of 600 kids playing on Wyville for six months, mostly 10 to 12-year-old tweens like Zoe. The research was led by Yasmin Kafayin, sponsored by NSF and the MacArthur Foundation, and I want to acknowledge the significant contributions to this research by Melissa Cook, Michael Jiang, and David Feldon, who is also here at USU. Okay, so let me explain why Zoe was looking for African-American t-shirts. In Wyville, everyone starts off with this Wyville newbie face. <laughs> Originally, this was just a simple smiley face here. Um, in order to make your look or your avatar, you need to shop for and layer on all sorts of two-dimensional pieces. Okay? These are all hand-drawn by kids. You might start with your head, add eyes, nose, mouth, um, eyebrows, of course. Have you seen avatars without eyebrows? It's weird. Um, some good hair, a body with clothes. Notice how it comes with a neck. Um, and maybe some accessories like eye makeup, fairy wings, and a rose. This, by the way, is the only cool avatar I ever made in Wyville. Most of the time, I think I look good, but the kids tease me that I really don't fit in. I think I'm showing my age. Now, if you notice, the clothes on Wyville come with necks, which means that the clothes have skin color. And this is why Zoe was looking for African-American t-shirts. She wanted to be black on Wyville, like she was in real life, but couldn't find the clothes to do it. And who can blame her for wanting to be herself online and representing her ethnicity as part of who she was? 
So this was a problem, and it was bigger than just Zoe. We actually counted all of the face parts with skin on Wyville and found massive inequities. 90% um, of the clothes on Wyville are, were peach skinned, uh, which means that kids like Zoe, who wanted to be black or Latina or Asian or even pixie or goth, uh, faced major challenges to being themselves online. I mean, they could have mismatched heads and necks, but really, it's not very attractive. And as you can imagine, it would draw some negative criticism and ridicule. So here we have an injustice. There aren't enough body parts for the kids who want to be black or Latino or pretty much anything except for peach skinned on Wyville. Who's to blame? Well, here's the interesting part. The owners of Wyville and the designers do not make the face parts. Instead, it's the citizens of Wyville, namely the kids, who make the more than 30,000 face parts on the site. Kids created this inequity. However unintentional, the kids are responsible. So follow along with me as I share four ways that kids responded to this and other issues of social justice in Wyville through tween activism. First, let me explain how kids began tackling the inequity of face parts on Wyvel. They took to the newspapers and ran campaigns to boost the range of face parts available in different skin colors. There's a weekly serial in Wyville called the Wyville Times. It is written by kids and lightly curated by Numidon, the owners and designers of Wyville. Okay? To give credit where credit is due, when I quote kids' articles, I will cite them by their listed username. To wit, as Tammy324 argued, blacks deserve bodies too. What I'm saying is that there are faces other than white ones, and we should remember that. I am trying to produce a whole line of products for black avatars, and I would appreciate it if some of you out there would help. I already have some people working on designs, but we need more. So began a campaign for designing parts that would help people have choices in how they represented themselves online. Kids themselves sought to hit the design boards and make parts, asking for help and funds to facilitate the cause. List 22 summed up the problem and solution this way. It's not the Wyville owners, but the citizens who have taken the most active role in the designing of face parts. Complaining and blaming the general public because of the lack of dark-skinned outfits isn't helping anything. You can't order people to make parts for you. The logical thing, obviously, is to design it for yourself. This is like running an on-the-ground activist campaign. Join in the designs, and if you don't have the time or skills, donate some virtual money to help us do it. As a second example, let me share how some kids took this issue of inequity and appearances on Wyville to a new level of exploration. Okay, being that Wyville is a virtual world, it's pretty easy to change your image. I mean, you can literally step into someone else's shoes, at least in terms of appearances. It occurred to some kids that they could dress differently and actually see if other people treated them differently in Wyville. Then they wrote up their experiences in the newspaper to build awareness. Some kids who were white, dressed as Latina or black. One girl who was white in Wyville, but Latina in real life, decided to change her look to be more like her physical self. Two other kids, Amanda and Derrico, decided to dress as their normal, highly fashionable Wyville selves, and then to switch to the newbie smiley face and see if others treated them differently. Some kids were treated poorly. Sometimes they were treated quite normally. The experiences varied. But they wrote about them all in a type of investigative journalism. Some of these kids were bullied, but they didn't take it as victims. Instead, they wrote about their experiences and sought to change the situation, calling on people to act better. There was a third injustice that really got to some kids. The main Wyville smiley face. Notice the skin color? Citizens like Ninja04 noticed too. As this young person put it, I know this has offended some of my friends who have joined Wyville in the past. They think, why am I automatically peach? I think when you register for Wyville, there should be a choice at the beginning about what color you want to be or are. Um, I know this might clog up the servers a tad bit, but I'm sure it would help some. If we can't do this, maybe we could all start out as some unusual color that we all know most likely nobody has a skin tone like green or blue. Well, eventually, one of the Wyville senators picked up the cause and made public pleas to Numidon, the Wyville designers, saying, at least make them blue or something. To which they replied, be careful what you ask for. And soon after that, the Bluebee invasion began. 
All newbies were blue, smiley faces. A couple of years later, newbies could choose between six basic skin colors for head, clothes, hair, in constructing their brand new avatars. The designers actually changed Yville based on feedback from the kids. The kids had substantive influence on the design of their virtual world. One final illustration of the ways that kids took up activist roles in this virtual world. There's an odd event that periodically takes place in Yville. Every once in a while, one of the servers with all the face parts on it goes down, and everyone reverts back to the Yville newbie smiley faces. Now, most of Yvillian's wealth is invested in face parts, so this is like losing all of your belongings for the day. It can be pretty upsetting. Okay. Everything that distinguished you is you, all that work that you put into your look, gone. But then a strange phenomenon started picking up. Because everyone looks like potato heads and those smiley faces, some citizens started celebrating those periodic events as Tater Day. <laughs> as Sweden 2005 expressed, even though this day may not have been intentional or sent by the city workers, even though it may just have been a computer glitch, I still grasp this as a day of acceptance for many people. This day may just slightly bridge all the gaps in the stereotypes in Wyville. Avatars around Wyville began celebrating this as a day of social equanimity when all visible differences disappeared. They took pictures and wished each other happy Tater Day. These pictures are from a time when all the smiley faces were still peach, but just check out that celebration. They took a glitch and turned it into a holiday about social justice and equity. Hooray! We all look the same! Let's celebrate! I could go on and on. Kids use Wyville to fight for various causes, both within and outside of the virtual world. They create face parts to protest war, fight against racism, save the whales, fight for the environment. They write articles about problems they see in their everyday lives outside of Wyville, in school, in the world. You can read about all this and more in my co-authored book, Connected Play, Tween Life in a Virtual World. But let's step back for a moment and think about what the kids are doing, and what made these kinds of actions possible. Okay. In Wyville, kids made, they began campaigns to change problems that they created. They conducted investigative journalism to uncover and expose injustice. They fought for actual changes to the design of their world. And they created a holiday from an in-world disaster to build awareness and goodwill. What made all of this frankly encouraging activism possible? Well, let's think about it. For one, kids are the majority citizens in Wyville. They have a huge range of social freedoms. They really write their own newspaper, grammatical and spelling mistakes included. They really run the major business of that world, of fashion. They have power over designs, can run businesses, can take on roles of leadership and governance. This is a huge degree of creative agency. Where else in kids' lives do they have these kinds of freedoms and responsibilities? What this means is that when problems occur, the kids know that they are the ones who are responsible. More than that, there's a history of the people of power, the owners and essentially the governors and law keepers of Wyville, responding to their pleas. The adults listen. How encouraging and empowering do you think it would be to have your words and ideas listened to not only by your peers, but by those with administrative power to change the laws and designs of your world? Do you think that this would make a difference in the future lives of those kids who engage in activism and actually see tangible results from their actions? I do. So here's what you should take away. When given the opportunity, many kids do step up and take responsibility over their actions. They know what's fair and what's unfair. Are we, as parents, educators, adults, enabling them to work for fairness and justice? Do we encourage them to identify wrongs and work towards rights? Or are we giving them more practice sitting on the sidelines, being protected and controlled, telling them things are out of their hands? Kids need practice in fighting for social justice now, while they're young, in whatever situation they are in, in their schools, in their neighborhoods, in their playgrounds. Virtual worlds like Wyville can provide one place to, to support this kind of learning. 
but we can design other worlds that support kids standing up for social justice as well, in our homes, our neighborhoods, our schools, our workplaces, and our cities. Let's do that. Oh, and happy Tater Day. <laughs>